What is spaghetti code and how do you avoid it? Well, it gets its name because like a giant tangle of spaghetti pasta, if you pull on one strand, AKA a piece of code, it ends up getting entwined in another and another and another until it or all the tangled pieces break. So how do we avoid this? Well, here are three best practices to follow. Number one, develop coding standards. Coding standards are what make projects like WordPress possible. Thousands of developers have worked on the core, but the WordPress coding standards have made it so that they're all working within the same guidelines. Coding standards are just rules you enforce so that errors are easy to find and fix, and the future devs can know exactly what each line of code does. If Susan's code isn't passing its test, it doesn't get in. If Janine's code doesn't have tests to run, the pull request is denied. When you begin scaling projects, having direct references to specific files and lines of code can impede that development. Files can go missing, lines can get deleted or misnumbered, and debugging it to find out which strand of the spaghetti got pulled can take hundreds of hours. Having coding standards can keep this sort of mess from happening as often. If you wanna learn more about coding standards in general, Geeks for Geeks has an excellent guide. Number two, follow a style guide. While it may sound similar in theory to a coding standard, the two are very different. Coding standards are there as enforceable rules your devs follow in order to keep the code working efficiently. A style guide, however, is generally written on a language by language basis, providing a series of best practices for making the code more readable and functional. For example, Airbnb created one of the best style guides for React.js. If you're not a React dev, then it means next to nothing, but for React developers, looking at this can help show you how your code should be structured and written. A style guide isn't necessarily enforceable rules, they're suggestions to make the code more uniform, which makes the code easier to read, which prevents spaghetti code because you know precisely what strand you're pulling on at any given time. Number three, Comment your code. When you write something, create a comment about what it does. If it's a complicated function or snippet, explain what the logic does and why it matters. It is worth mentioning that you can run into issues if you rely on comments though. The first being that it adds a lot of extra time to projects. When you're crunching to hit a deadline, it's not always front of mind to write out a detailed explanation of it. And if you start out commenting and fall off mid project, you could end up with a big plate of spaghetti. Even if you comment occasionally on important lines or snippets, you're going to save someone who is trying to figure out what that code does, and that is valuable. So there you go. Those are the three best practices to follow to avoid spaghetti code. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. With that said, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.